Hello there, Akoma here with your weekly dose of happy chatter. These are just short, candid conversations between me and my fellow happiness enthusiasts. Enjoy! Hello there, happy Friday. I have another question for you guys, and this week Dave will be on helping me answer this question for you guys. I got a question about why happiness. Basically, somebody asked me, with such a serious job and such a serious profession, why would I choose to chase happiness instead of like impact or service or prestige or there's lots of things, you know, that you could be chasing within this profession. Like, why do I prioritize happiness? So I thought that would be a great topic to touch on today. That's a good one. Lots of layers. By the way, hi, everyone. This is Dave. Great. Great. (laughs) So I prioritize happiness for, I would say, three reasons. One, because I think that aside from being a lawyer, I'm a person. And I genuinely believe that happiness is a core purpose as people. I think that when we chase happiness, it's not even chase. It's about creating happiness. I don't believe in chasing happiness. I think that's the wrong word. But when you create happiness in your life, I think that that is an expanding quality and it only makes your life better and it makes the life of those around you better. Two, I think that being happy makes you a better lawyer. I mean, the studies show and it's really clear that being happy in so many ways It makes you smarter. It makes you more creative. You sleep better. You're healthier. There's all these things that come from having a positive outlook and a positive mindset that would positively impact your practice. So I think it's a foundation on which to build your practice as opposed to something that comes out of your practice or out of your career or out of your life. I think if you start with happiness, everything grows from there. And then the third thing is that I think that happiness is the way you create impact. So I think it serves all of those other things that are also important to me and I think to most lawyers. I think a lot of people who go into law school go into law school because they want to be of service in society. They want to make an impact. They want to, you know, quote unquote, change the world. And that all sounds like big and grandiose and like how can you – do that if you're just doing this flighty happiness journey. But it ties back to the first and second. I think that the foundation as a person and the foundation of happiness allows you to be that person who can create that impact. It allows you to see with a certain clarity and move through the world in a way that will have a bigger impact. And that's not to say you can't create an impact without happiness. I just firmly believe that happiness magnifies that impact. Yeah. It's, it's, there's a lot of sort of judgment, I think in that question. And you sort of touched on it when you said this flighty thing, maybe I'm just, you know, we see what we feel in ourselves because I'm still wrestling with this, but sort of the cynical response to that is like, don't bury your head on the sand or like you're thinking ignorance is bliss or whatever. And it's, it's not about that. I mean, you can choose your own reality. So you definitely could decide that if happiness was your exclusive priority and you didn't particularly find meaning or value or self-fulfillment from all these other things, you could just choose to be ignorant of, you know, some of the realities of life and find happiness. But for, I think, you know, like you said, the vast majority of lawyers who choose to go to law school, there's, there is that component where they do believe in service. And I mean, you know, all the, every major religion preaches service and there's a reason it's, because you elevate yourself when you do service. So choosing happiness isn't saying I'm going to ignore all this bad stuff or, you know, like you said, be this sort of flighty, ditzy person. And I think that is the thing that I'm still sort of wrestling with is like being okay with that and realizing that like, oh, if I look out at the news or at the world and I think like things need to get a lot better, things are really bad, I can still choose to like find all the other things that are particularly amazing in my life as a source of happiness. And, you know, like if someone's having a terrible day and you're radiating joy and you come to them, like from a place of compassion and listening and openness, they're going to absorb that. You always talk about like shine your light and all that other stuff where you 
can carry, like you said, carry the emotion or the mental state and the the reality that you're embracing into all the things you experience and all the people you interact with, and they it change the course of it. Again, I'm thinking of this thing about the language and the emotion of the speech when played against the water, and it physically changes the way the molecules are oriented. Like, Yeah, he's going into quantum physics stuff. So there's all sorts of studies out there about the vibrational energy of different emotions. And as you, the higher vibration, the highest vibration is love. And the lowest vibration is fear. And so this is, I could go down a long, long path on this, but maybe I'll do another separate little episode on this. But the idea is that, you know, it has to do with law of attraction and all these types of more scientific explanations for why being happy brings people good luck and why happy people tend to have happier, like happiness breeds happiness, basically. Why is happiness contagious? All of these things have been studied at a very scientific molecular level. And that's part of what Dave is alluding to here. But I also wanted to go back a little bit on something he mentioned about looking out into the world. And I think sometimes people, especially people who deal with really emotional or serious situations, for example, if you're pro bono client is like a domestic violence victim, or if you're working, you know, on the front lines of these really hard hitting issues, it can feel icky. I know that's not a very (laughs) sophisticated word, (laughs) but it doesn't feel right to then live this really joyous life when you know there's so much hardship for other people. And I completely get that because when I worked at the Innocence Project, I would just be distraught when I would leave my clients, knowing that they were stuck in prison, wrongfully incarcerated, some of them for decades. And I was just going to go home and have dinner. And many of them had been in prison longer than I had been alive at that point. And it just felt so unfair to me that I had that freedom and they didn't. And who was I to go home and eat dinner? And I should just spend all of my time working on their case because I should be taking it more seriously or something. And that's not sustainable. And that's what it comes down to. Like, it doesn't make their situation any better for you to one, burn out, or for you to two, just be mopey around on the outside. Sure, if you honestly could work 24 hours a day on it and maintain that high level of commitment and like fire and effectiveness, exactly, do it, go for it. But most people can't. So you have to find the joy in your life and really appreciate it. Because let's be honest, they probably would want you to be appreciating your freedom. Right. They wouldn't want you just being all mopey when you're free because that just seems so (laughs) self-indulgent. And again, it goes back to you become a better advocate for them when you're at your best. And you're at your best when you're enjoying your own life. And the time is going to pass. Your life is going to pass you by. And it's not intended to be one of pure service and sacrifice. So don't sacrifice your life because you think you're supposed to for the cause. Yeah. Uh, One of the ways that I think about it when I am feeling this way, because I constantly wrestle with like the privilege of getting to be happy and like getting to turn off or whatever, is if you can imagine two, like in terms of actions, it meet like 100% identical courses of action that achieve that one same outcome and you can go along that course of action, you know, feeling terrible all the time or go along it like operating from a place of happiness. Obviously you're not like numb, happy numb sounds weird, but you're not like inured to the effects of what you experience, but you know, genuinely having as a source of drive, happiness and focus, which one would you choose? And obviously I would choose to feel good instead of feel bad if I'm achieving the same outcome. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous to assume that the outcome is going to be actually identical because all these things we talked about, how if you choose things that prioritize happiness, you're going to be more effective. And, you know, I don't know if some people, someone doesn't believe in the quantum thing, it's a little bit harder, it's a tougher sell. But like, you know, data says happier people are more effective are more successful or more potential. And so it's like, that's what it is for me often. It's feeling okay to choose to be happy. So I just want to, Yeah. I I agree with what you're saying, and I just want to ground it in kind of my experience, which is why I chose to be happy at Big Law. Because I think so many people 
see it as a means to end. And often that end is paying off their student loans. And so you're really have decided I'm going to be here for the three, five, eight years, however long it's going to take you to pay off your loans. And you get to choose. Do I want to be here for that time and be unhappy? Or do I want to be here for that time and try to make the most of it and really appreciate the opportunities that it's affording me? And once you figure out that you can choose to be happy in that situation, you'll be surprised at the opportunities that present themselves and how much better you connect to the work and the people and the experience of being there. And why waste that three to five years? You may as well enjoy it while you're there. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're almost done. But the idea that you can choose your emotions, I think one of the resistances that I have is like, why wouldn't my emotions reflect the reality that I just experienced? And it's maddening for me that you constantly say, why would they? Like, it's your choice. So that's sort of the point that, I don't know, that I want to leave it off with personally is you just talked about you could spend three to five years and choose to be like sad and mopey and frustrated and stressed. And like, that's not like illegitimate. Being a lawyer is hard. It's challenging and you have to work long hours and like make stressful decisions and screw up and get yelled at by people that are you want to think you're doing a good job. But you choose how to react to every single thing you experience. It sucks, but you know, what do you call it? Radical responsibility? Correct. You just got to take radical responsibility for your life. Maybe we'll do another episode on that. Thanks a lot for listening, you guys. Bye. Peace. Happy Chatter episode is brought to you guys by Audible.com. As most of you know, I love to read, but I also know it can be a struggle to find the time and energy to read as a practicing attorney. So I'm super excited to bring you guys this special offer for a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial over at www.audibletrial.com forward slash the Happy Lawyer Project. With over 180,000 titles to choose from, there's definitely something for everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in. And as usual, I'm super happy you're here. Until next time. Thanks for listening.